Yeah. And an awful for you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Oh, how are you? Fine. I'm good. Good to see you, sir. Good to see you. Hi, Nice to see you, sir. Fine, sir. Thank you very much.
the approval of the military aid. Let me tell you, uh, Alfonso and I recently accompanied the whole we meet uh, with the troop commanders. They deserve also. We have been very right, if I only say, when you have indicated that you cannot fight Soviet gun helicopters with just boots and wings and rights. They need it. If they are provided with the necessary support, they can change it. And have a turnaround on the military situation. We consider the military pressure also important for the success of the political initiative. Ah, now that's the thing. This is the thing we've been trying to make our people understand, that this is not an attempt to simply overthrow. Right. This is to simply come back and, as we said, negotiate out what the original goals of the federation were. And our people need to hear that. So would you mind if, after we get rid of the press in the next room, and after I, well, I'll, I'll make some remarks while they're there. Yes, and then, then they can, I can call on you to say just what you said. Please, the goal President. Is. Loving Right now. No, this is there's no question that they did a target that they're going to go all out in these next few weeks to try and convince the Congress that we must have that support. And in fact I have been saying what you just said, that using terms like band-aids and mosquito down and so forth is not very healthy against the helicopter gunship. Absolutely. And we also need a strong, credible southern front. It's important to present to have that. In the same way that, of course, the Atlantic Coast people should also be in the And we have some indications today that Honduras is going to be much more helpful in every way in, in uh, allowing forces to go in, and for your forces to go in. And, uh, they were in the past. It was a slowdown for a bit. Yes, Mr. Secretary, that's that true. I mean, supplies, drops, so on might be resumed. But of course, the Honduras, as one of your colleagues was, was telling us, of the course, they need some discretion. Yes. But we do it in a discreet manner. That's what the ambassador of Honduras told yes. me a few days ago. But the uh, important thing is to have the availability. Right. Yeah, right. 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 You might be interested to know that on my trip down to Grenada the other day, I met with the nine prime ministers of the Caribbean, those island, small island nations, and they brought up on their own to me, just united totally, that we must continue to provide the help that Nicaragua under the present regime is, they believe, a definite threat to their very survival. Without flattering, we have two allies, the Pope and you. You're a good country. How's the morale of the troops in the field? What are they feeling at this point? About the, the rank and file of they want to speak, but well, I will put it this way. We have to go see them in order to raise up our morale. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the way uh, we, we come back to the, with a bath of, of uh, patriotism and enthusiasm whenever we come out from seeing that's great. Adolfo, if we get this funding, what, what is your assessment as to the increase, the number that will come over? Well, we have to, uh, first we have to get our people in. Uh, secondly, we have to get the peasants to trust that there will not be this inconsistency or you know, this uh, in and out situation. And that can only be assured by US, uh, by a US decision. Uh, and uh, once that happens, uh, and we have the wherewithal to, to, to give to new volunteers, uh, we could get them by the, by the hundreds, by the thousands, including the, the breakup of the San Luisa militia, and the possible breakup of the army. There would be whole army units coming over to our side. I mean, after what happened in the Philippines, when you have a, a, a Marcos men, a, I mean, army men of years and years and years and years, and just coming over to the other side, I mean, things push. And 
that, that's our expectation. But we have to have a U.S. firm decision. That, that, that comes for anything else. And a long-term commitment, uh, the fact that it should be long-term, this policy of in and out, halfway only, has been a disaster. That's important. And the second part is, is the uh, diplomatic initiative, so we can uh, give the needed uh, uh, tools to the Latin American governments, so they can start shifting publicly, as they do privately, uh, in support of our cause and against uh, the Sandinistas. This is that's why we feel that uh, uh, we also have in parallel to that have a very strong Latin American diplomatic initiative to chip them around and give them the weapons to, to uh, go publicly. Well, I would add one thing to what Alfonso says. Latin American governments are, are hiding behind U.S. indecision. Yes. That's a big excuse, sir. I know that three or four of us who just came in here are deeply grateful to you for because it brings you all together. I have just met with these leaders of the United Nicaraguan opposition who represent the hope for democracy in Nicaragua. Arturo Cruz, Adolfo Calero, and Alfonso Robello. Haiti and the Philippines have demonstrated the desire of people worldwide for democratic rule. In Central America, great strides toward democracy have been taken in every country except Nicaragua, where the Sandinista dictatorship is consolidating communist control. And I think the world is watching to see if Congress is as committed to, to democracy in Nicaragua in our own hemisphere as it was in the Philippines. The Nicaraguan democratic resistance, 40% former Sandinistas, now confronts new Soviet weapons including the same helicopters used to massacre the resistance in Afghanistan. And democratic reconciliation remains possible if we support those who share our ideals. However, if we don't provide our friends with the means to stop these Soviet gunships, Nicaragua's freedom fighters will suffer the same fate as the Hungarian freedom fighters did 30 years ago who had nothing to defend themselves against Soviet tanks. The second question that will be answered with this vote is whether Congress is as determined to keep Central America free as Ortega and Castro are to make it communist. I've asked for $100 million in assistance, and we'll fight for it. Simple humanitarian aid is not enough. As these gentlemen have definitely agree, you can't stop tanks and gunships with bandages and bedrolls. Congressional defeat of this aid proposal could well deliver Nicaragua permanently to the communist bloc. Procrastination risks a military victory for the Sandinistas who hope to finish off the freedom fighters before American help can arrive. We implore Congress not to delay and to provide that help. And for two years, the freedom fighters have gotten no military assistance from the United States, except that that some of you know has been provided and Moscow has provided a half a billion dollars in arms. Defeat for the Contras would mean a second Cuba on the mainland of North America. It would be a major defeat in the quest for democracy in our hemisphere. And it would mean consolidation of a privileged sanctuary for terrorists and subversives just two days driving time from Harlingen, Texas. Now, I don't think any of us are going to try and sell the idea that just a little Nicaragua could represent a threat to the United States. But that isn't what they have in mind either. They have in mind being a launching pad for revolution up and down, first of all, Latin America. We have the definite proof that they continue, the Sandinista government continues to send arms to the guerrillas in El Salvador that are trying still to get rid of that democratic government that is now installed there. And does anyone, can anyone imagine how much more help they would be able to give if once they were totally victorious and had no opposition within their own country anymore? And what they could do to unseat the surrounding, the neighboring democracies. I think it would place in jeopardy the survival of each 
of those small and fragile democracies now in Central America, open up the possibility of Soviet military bases on America's doorstep, could threaten the security of the Panama Canal, inaugurate a vast migration northward to the United States of hundreds of thousands of refugees. And those who would invite this strategic disaster by abandoning yet another fighting ally of this country in the field will be held fully accountable by history. Well, now that's all that I'm going to say here for the moment and in a few moments we'll have... I hope I have a chance to to say something. It'll be open discussion. Everyone's going to want to add something to the president. Yeah, the Does any hope for negotiations at all? I'm a little more optimistic than that. I'm, we're going to tell our story to the American people and we're going to continue to work on Congress and I refuse to give up. Thank you very I remember much. a man named Winston Churchill who said, never give in. Never, never, never. They won't. How tough is, the cell, on, how tough is the cell on the hill, Mr. President? We'll be talking to our friends up there. <laughs> okay, let's go. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's amazing that they, 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 they maintain crowd control of people, though. I mean, they're good. She, whoever she is, I mean, I'm darn, she says. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't say it. Spent 20 years in Castro's jails. They had an inaudible, almost an unrecognizable voice on t on a, on tape from the last time in here. And that's where they got it. <laughs> and I didn't say it. And I told them the other day that I thought maybe one of them said it about us. <laughs> <laughs> but now to all of you here, we're so grateful for you being here. And I know these three gentlemen are. And, uh, <coughs> I wonder if you'd like to hear Mr. Cruz say to you what he just said to me in the other room about the goals of you know and the contract Thank you, Mr. President. Well, I don't need to tell you that there's been a tremendous disinformation campaign. And uh, I want to stress there is a coincidence between your American strategic interest in the region as well as your commitment to democracy development. So there's a commitment, a coincidence of commitments. We believe that uh, there should be a two-track approach, to be followed with great vigor, uh, with the view of finding a political solution. However, even if we come up as we will, with uh, an ingenious diplomatic proposal to really deal with Contadora in the right context, that is to say, that the democratization of Nicaragua is the center piece of that solution, it is essential to have the, the military support. Because otherwise, whatever initiative in the diplomatic field we take would be lacking teeth. And you know how callous the Sandinistas are, as Marxist Leninists. And um, we met recently, the three of us, with the regional commanders of EFDN. 
they told us that. I mean, we need them in order to bring a turnaround. The president, they said, we do need real aid. We need artillery. We need anti-aircraft weaponry. For instance, so you have an idea. There is a type of machine gun which is essential. The Sandinistas have one machine gun of that type for every 10 men, whereas the rebels only have one for every 100 men. So whoever says I mean, that the approval of the aid is a militaristic attitude is fully wrong. The only way we will ever persuade the Sandinistas to come to the negotiating table is through pressure. And we have those courageous young men willing to fight for it. <coughs> we have been assured, these gentlemen, that there is no lack of morale among the Contras that are out there. They are patriotic and willing to keep on going, and they deserve the help that we can give them. Well, I know that you are all on that side. I guess maybe the only thing here is to point out that anything that you can do to be of help, such as the groups that you can influence and so forth, to be of help in the Congress, because in these next few weeks, we're, we're going all out to see if we cannot get past this aid once and for all. And I told these gentlemen, I was pleased to be able to tell them that last week when I went down to uh, Grenada and met with nine prime ministers of those tiny Caribbean island nations, all nine of them, they brought it up. And with the utmost of sincerity, they told me, they brought the subject up, 